Good morning. I was tasked to discuss community diagnosis. For this particular presentation, here are my references. Here is the objective. At the end of this session, you will be able to discuss the importance of community diagnosis. Some of you may recognize this place. This is Smoky Mountain, similar to Payatas. So why is it called Smoky Mountain? This is a dumping site for garbage. And from afar, the pile of garbage is so high, it is like a mountain. And with smoke, it seems like there is smoke, but this is actually gas. Methane from decomposing garbage. The residents constructed their makeshift houses at the foot of the mountain of garbage when the rains come pouring in. Disaster. Now, how do the residents of Smoky Mountain eat? They have a mamba bachoy. So they gather all the leftovers they can collect and then lulutuin ulit yan ng mamba bachoy. So madaming toyo, madaming palasa. Then piesta na. When I was there not so long ago, our guide told us, never cover your nose. Huwag niyong tatakpan ng ilong niyo. Now, these people breathe the air of decomposing garbage every day. And this is a means of livelihood for them. Now, thanks to the garbage, they are alive. Our guide also told us, that you will not see a lot of senior citizens around here. Wala hong masyadong senior citizens dito who can live long with this kind of environment. Can you think of a solution to this problem? Many of you will be thinking relocation. They were actually relocated to a relocation site somewhere in Cavite. But they returned to Smoky Mountain after some time. Why? Because they had no means of livelihood. The children here work hard labor at an early age when they should be playing. The children here do play and if you see that twinkle in their eyes, I know of some people who would gladly give up everything they have to be able to experience how it is to be a child. Thank goodness, Smoky Mountain is a thing of the past. Now it is a park for children. But still, there are dumping sites like Payatas, places like Smoky Mountain, people inhabit to live. It's why we teach community diagnosis to our medical students. It's what we teach our students now, there may be other methods in conducting the community diagnosis, but this is a straightforward guide from the identification of the problem to the practical applications to address the identified problems. From the Dictionary of Epidemiology, community diagnosis is the process of appraising the health status of a community, including analysis, health-related statistics, and information on health determinants. Find by Eng and Blanchard, community diagnosis is a method of assessing a community's needs and characteristics that takes into account its social dynamics and other factors affecting internal problem-solving capacity. Community diagnosis aims to identify and quantify the health problems in a community on the basis of morbidity and mortality rates and ratios. Second, to identify individuals or groups in the community who are at risk of developing the disease or who need health care. From this, we will be able to determine the available resources and set priorities for planning. Sources of data for community diagnosis and the primary or secondary. 
the community diagnosis process is very much like the application of techniques of diagnosis of an individual. For individual diagnosis, we get a comprehensive history and we perform a careful and accurate physical examination. We get the diagnosis. Sometimes tests may be required. When it comes to community diagnosis, we talk with the community, we search for records, and sometimes we do surveys, and we get the community diagnosis. Here are similarities between a clinical diagnosis and community diagnosis. There are differences. The following are the importance of conducting a community diagnosis. It provides a baseline information about the health status of community residents. It ensures that decisions are based on solid information and evidence. It helps set priorities, keeping in mind that resources in the community may be limited. and helps local leaders assess outcomes and results in the longer term for evaluation. Here are health indicators notably morbidity and mortality records, maternal and child health, sources of livelihood and occupational health, environmental health. We tell the students to observe. It's very dangerous to walk on this bridge. Ang daming awang. Ay lang mas mahira pag nahulog ka. Hindi ka dapat makainom ng tubig from this. As early as first year, we expose the students to the adopted or partner community by conducting a community diagnosis. We ask the students to prepare their own questionnaire and of course they apply what they have learned in preventive medicine. And they should look at the community profile, the location, the land area and the boundaries. In short, they will prepare a, short, a spot map and the total population, the physical features and the resources available. LCUP clinical clerks conducting a community diagnosis last August. LCUP clinical clerks conducting a community diagnosis last August. Projects addressing the community's health needs. Projects addressing the community's health needs. Identified health needs are addressed by health promotion and education teach in the community. Do you recognize her? Are these pictures familiar to you? This is Rosario and this is Barangay Tanyo. What could have been done to prevent Rosario's demise? And what can we do to prevent a similar scenario from happening?